Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reapy Ron. Today we are going to be taking a look at the SWAT class for beginners in Killing Floor 2. And I'm really excited about this one because SWAT, I believe, is one of the best starting classes for any beginner. It's a very good class um, if you're new to either Killing Floor or if you're new to FPS games in general. So let's go over some of the passives that SWAT has, what makes them so strong, and why a beginner might want to pick SWAT. So first up, you get 1% bonus weapon damage um, with all of your weapons every level. Great, pretty standard. You know, more damage is always awesome. You get bullet resistance, 5% to start out with, and then 1% with every level that you increase. This is a little bit useful against certain bosses, Hans and the Patriarch mainly, because they're going to be the ones shooting the most. So you do get a little bit of bonus towards them, but for all the regular Zeds, it's not that big a deal. Uh, you do get increased magazine size, 4% per level, uh, going up to a maximum of 100% at max. So you double your uh, magazine size with all of your submachine guns. That is actually really good. The higher level you get up, the more sustained fire you'll have as SWAT. And you have weapon switch speed, 1% per level. This is also just useful. Switching your weapons in and out just makes them much easier, uh, especially if you need to reload and there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. So let's go over the first build that I'd recommend for SWAT. And that is this build, which is going with heavy armor training. This gives you 50% bonus armor at the start of a match. It also makes it so as long as you have body armor, you cannot take health damage unless it's from a sonic attack. Uh, and clots cannot grab you. The not being grabbed is really, really good with this. And just starting out with bonus armor gives you such a huge bonus at the early game. Uh, we're going to go with close combat training. This can be switched out later, but I do recommend always starting out with close combat training, especially with SWAT, because this will give you a second 9mm. And it makes it so your 9mm and your knife do an additional 85% more damage. This does make it so the 9mm can out damage all of your submachine guns shot for shot. You'll still be able to out DPS the 9mm, but it is kind of interesting that 9mm can be the strongest on per weapon for SWAT and Commando. Um, interestingly enough, for level 15, we're going to take suppression rounds. This increases the stumble power of all your weapons, making the enemy stumble with submachine guns is really easy. And this just makes it even better. Um, I would usually recommend switching this out though as the rounds go on so that you can carry up to 30% more ammo with each of your weapons. Just early on, you can't buy enough ammo to really make the most use of this. Uh, so you don't need it in the first couple waves of the game. You probably want to switch to it later. It's the same reasoning for like tactical reload. Um, you just get such a bonus at the start, but you can switch them in and out. If you're going to go beyond this, uh, at level 20, I recommend assault armor for this build. This increases your maximum armor by 50%, so you can have 150 armor. And you also begin the game with an additional 50 armor. So if you have heavy armor training and assault armor, you start out the match with 100 armor. And then for your level 25 perk with this build, you can pick either Battering Ram or Rapid Assault. Rapid Assault is generally the better overall um, Zed perk because Zed time perk because uh, being able to have infinite ammo and shoot near real time and increase your stumble power with your weapons is great. Um, all of your weapons already have really high rates of fire and, you know, uh, being able to abuse that fact with infinite ammo is really good. Battering Ram allows you to do massive damage to any Zed that you hit as well as run pretty much in real time. Um, this is just hit with your body. You don't actually have to like physically melee them or anything. Just physically ram into them. It also pretty much knocks down any Zed. This can be pretty useful for actually getting your team out of bad positions uh, if Zed time happens to trigger at a good point. And I've come to appreciate it more than what I used to. Um, it's not a bad perk. I would still probably recommend Rapid Assault, but Battering Ram is a choice here. All right, so your starting weapon with SWAT is the MP7, which is a great little gun. It's probably one of the best starting weapons. Um, it's full auto or single fire, uh, depending on which you prefer. It also has a red dot, which makes it really good. It has really good sights. And it does uh, pretty good damage to all the small Zeds. Submachine guns do bonus damage to pretty much any of the small Zeds and most of the medium Zeds. Um, they are really good at killing these enemies, as well as you start out with dual 9mm, which is really strong. Um, you know, having an extra gun for free is great, as well as having bonus damage with these guns also makes it great. You can actually just use these weapons for the first early waves. Not have to worry about, uh, you know, selling them or buying another gun. You can kind of just get away with using this. It's also really useful that you can't take any sort of health damage as long as you have armor. Since you start out with 100 armor, they have to break all 100 armor before they can hurt you. 
That is really, really strong for the first wave, and I think the SWAT is probably the most likely to survive class for wave one on any difficulty. Um, maybe only bested by, like, Firebug or something. Uh, aiming for headshots is going to be the best use of your weapons, because your weapons don't do that much damage per shot, but they do uh, a lot of damage per second. Weapons like the MP7 also have very little recoil, so you can actually hold down the trigger for quite a while. So even if you're not the best shot, going for body shots is still okay. Uh, and if need be, you can also go to your knife, because your close combat skill gives you bonus damage with the knife, making it also a pretty good option for the early wave. You can actually stay just with this build, not buying ammo, not buying extra armor for quite a few waves, actually. Um, so if you really want to save up to get, like, a tier 4 weapon, you can. In this guide, I'm not going to be going over tier 4 or, or tier 5 weapons, just like all my beginner guides. This is going to be tier 3 and lower. That way new players can uh, afford those weapons and use them. The first weapon I'd recommend for this build is the Medic Submachine Gun. You can also keep the MP7 early on. Um... You don't need to get rid of it, uh, at least not right away. I would recommend switching it out later, but it's honestly not bad with upgrades either. It scales pretty well. The Medic Submachine Gun is also really strong on uh, SWAT in particular. Being able to heal your allies is great, um, and that's what you're mostly going to want to do with it. It doesn't scale the best out of your submachine gun, so you might not want to put any upgrades into it, but that's not a big deal because it only weighs three. So you can still have two other submachine guns and likely be able to upgrade them, even with still having the uh, Medic Submachine Gun. Medic submachine gun is also very cheap ammo-wise um, compared to some of the other submachine guns. Some of the other submachine guns do have a bit of a uh, price on them, so keep that in mind. Always be trying to go for headshots. It's really, really, really not common at all or uncommon at all for SWAT to have the most headshots. Even if you don't necessarily do the most damage, hitting things in the head is not that hard with SWAT. And I would recommend this definitely to a newer player that's new to FPS no games as well. Flying, okay? Submachine guns are pretty user friendly, low recoil for the most part, uh, good DPS, high rate of fire, and a high magazine is very useful for somebody that's, you know, doesn't have any experience shooting any guns in any games. It's also great for this game too, because this build is so strong in the early waves. You are pretty much guaranteed to get past the first couple waves of SWAT. Um, simply because you can't get grabbed, so you can outrun certain enemies. Um, and you have to have all of your armor broken before they can touch your health. So you essentially have two bars. You're actually even stronger, too, if you have a high-leveled support on your team. Because most supports are going to be running um, the resupply pack. The resupply pack makes it so that you can, once every round, grab ammo from them, as well as grab armor from them. This is really strong. Especially for SWAT. The second weapon I'd recommend with this loadout is going to be the UMP. The UMP is a great uh, beginner weapon too. It does high damage. It has pretty much one of the highest damage per shots out of the submachine guns. It's got an okay rate of fire. It does have a little bit more recoil than other guns. And its secondary fire isn't super useful. It's either full auto or three round burst. You pretty much always want to keep it on full auto. I don't really ever use the three round burst on it. You don't have, you know, faster rate of fire with it like the AK or something. Um, so just try to use that. Uh, I should also talk about your flashbang, but I'll talk about that once we get some big Zeds here. And let's talk about Zeds to look out for. Now, any sort of small, medium Zed. Um, so whether that be uh, Gorefast, Clots, um, Sirens, anything like that, you can fight pretty easily. You can kill them quite easily. Big Zeds are where you kind of struggle with. Unless you have flashbangs. So you can use these weapons really interchangeably, however you'd like. The Medic Submachine Gun does do enough damage to kill all sorts of small things, and you obviously want it out if you need to heal teammates. However, the UMP will do more damage and more DPS. Alright, we got some Flesh Pound showing up, so... Let's see. So, flashbang. This has a very high chance of stunning anything hit by it. However, if an enemy is enraged, like this flesh pound, it's not a- well, <laughs> that, 
That was kind of a bad example. That actually killed him. So the flesh things do a good amount of damage to Zeds, actually. They don't really do much damage to you, though. So don't be afraid to throw them at your feet in a bad situation. They can also be used on crowds, although I tend to like to save them for big Zeds. Uh, strikes, Flesh Pounds, you can stun them very easy. If they're raging, though, you have a much lower chance of stunning them. So keep that in mind. You want to wait for them to not be enraged. Um, this is easier to do on Flesh Pounds because it's kind of obvious when they're enraged. Uh, and then, you know, toss it at their feet after they've hit you or something like that. You can pull out your knife and block. We're almost out of time. Uh, Make your choices. You can also upgrade both these weapons. They do just fine with upgrades, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Or you could go with a third submachine gun if you'd like. SWAT has a lot of very lightweight weapons. So if you are going to go with three weapons, though, I would always recommend that you're, at least one of your weapons is the Medic SMG. Uh, simply because it does benefit the team so much, and it is very cheap uh, to buy ammo for. All right, so for our second build with SWAT, I would recommend starting with the exact same thing as the first build. Starting with this whole left side. It's always best to start out with heavy armor training, close combat training, and uh, the assault armor, just because you get 100% of your armor. You can't get grabbed. You then don't take any health damage until your armor breaks. And you get that second 9mm pistol that you can sell early on for bonus money. Now, I should also mention you can't sell that second 9mm as much for as much as if you found it on the ground. It's worth about half the price. And suppression rounds simply because we can't make the best use of ammo vest. However, after the first couple rounds, uh, we're going to switch off of this pretty much all to the right side then. Crouching SWAT hidden gun type build or something like that. Where we're going to be switching to all of these. So it's going to be tactical movement where you get uh, no movement penalty when aiming down sights. And you get just as fast movement speed as you would walking when crouching. You honestly don't need to take this. I still usually take heavy armor training over this one just because I like just not being able to get grabbed by clots. Then we'll switch over to tactical reload, faster reloads for all your weapons. That's always useful. Ammo vest, when we can actually carry more ammo because we want more ammo. And then cripple for hitting multiple enemies will slow down Zeds. Uh, heads and weak spots, apply this twice as fast. So you can really slow down a bunch of Zeds with this. Um, like I said though, you don't have to take uh, tactical movement if you don't want with this build. Heavy armor training is perfectly fine too, but just for the sake of it, we're going to go with this. And once again, at 25, it's your choice. I still think Rabbit Assault is better with this one, but Battering Ram is an option too if you want to take that. So this build functions a little bit differently than the first one. You can still move around and you're still going to be moving in a similar way. Just now you're probably going to be crouched just so that you have your bonus uh, recoil reduction, which once again, I am convinced that it's not enter entirely needed. Um, the submachine guns for the most part don't have that much recoil. This build will really benefit the ones that do have a bit more recoil, so weapons like the Tommy gun or the um, the nail gun, uh, which both will work on this one, and I will be going over the weapons in a little bit once we have the cash to get them. Uh, you could go with any of these submachine guns for this build as well, just like with the first one. They all kind of work. Most of the submachine guns feel pretty similar. You can also just keep the uh, MP7 early on. MP7 is really strong. Uh, also, I've been having a, uh, a question in each of these. Should you buy armor early on with this class? And for SWAT, no, not really. Uh, so long as you have armor. If you have armor just at all, um, you don't need extra armor, especially with the, uh, the heavy armor training. You don't need it because it'll just count as more health. So you don't need to buy armor early on because you'll probably already have it. You don't need to buy more of it because you're not really all that concerned with dying that early on as SWAT. Um, you have a very, very strong early game. So buying armor is not needed whatsoever. So with this build, I'm going to go with the nail gun as our first weapon. The nail gun is an incredibly strong SWAT weapon. It has a very unique fire. It can either be fired uh, one nail at a time like this, or switching to its secondary fire, it fires out three nails uh, with each shot. This increases your overall DPS by quite a bit. You have higher rate of fire with just single nails and you have less recoil, but uh, firing right, multiple nails with uh, its secondary fire inbound. will do much more DPS over time. And this is just a really strong weapon in general. It pairs well no, with pretty I'm much any flying, other okay. submachine gun. You could pair it with like the I medic submachine gun and it would work just fine. Uh, since we've already talked about that one, we're going to pick something else. But, you know, any submachine gun that works fine. This also can ricochet off of surfaces too. So keep that in mind. 
You don't necessarily need to hit the enemies directly. You can have the nails bounce into them. Now this weapon is probably your best weapon for killing anything big like Flesh Pounds or Strikes, just because it has the highest DPS out of, well, any of your weapons. It also does piercing damage rather than submachine gun damage, which is generally more versatile against most things. Because this does the same damage as like the, or the same damage type as like the crossbow or the katana stab. Uh, the next weapon we're going to get with this build is going to be the P90. However, like I said, you can pick any of the other submachine guns and you can still actually pick almost all the submachine guns if you don't want to upgrade these weapons. These upgrades, these weapons don't really need upgrades. Uh, the nail gun definitely benefits from them though. The P90 is just a little bullet hose and it is great for beginners. Has a huge magazine capacity. It has a red dot sight on it. That's pretty nice. Um, it has a pretty high rate of fire as well, and very little recoil. So, I mean, as you can see, I'm not even trying to fight the recoil with this. <laughs> and that's how much it climbed. Very, very little. So it is a great weapon for beginners. It also has really good ammo pickup with any of the ammo boxes. That's something you should be trying to do with SWAT, because a lot of your weapons aren't the cheapest to buy ammo for. And you're probably going to be spending most of your money buying ammo. Which isn't that big a deal, because in the early waves, you'll survive, so you don't need, like, the armor. Um, but it does become worse as the round goes on. SWAT is probably one of the strongest starting classes in any match on any difficulty, but they're probably one of the weakest classes by the end of the match. Um, some of your weapons, like the Vector and the, uh... Or sorry, the Chris, as it's called in this game. Or the nail gun, you know, can help make up for it, especially with the flashbangs. All right, so that will do it for the SWAT class. SWAT is an incredibly simple class. It's a very user-friendly class, and it's a great beginner class for anybody who hasn't even played an FPS game. The submachine guns provide all the damage that you would need, as well as their uh, recoil is very manageable. They have large magazines. Ammo can be a little bit of a concern for newer players because SWAT's ammo is a little bit expensive unless you're using something like the Medic SMG and then it's not that bad. Um, and you are really, really tanky in the early waves. So SWAT is just all around a fantastic class for newer players to play. And I would really recommend it if you're getting into Killing Floor and you uh, want to pick up just a class that you can be strong with. I'd recommend something like SWAT or Support. Both of them are really good. Uh, so next time we're going to be looking at Survivalist, which is the most varied class in the whole game. So that'll be an interesting one to do because there's so many builds that we could do with it. But I'm going to try to stick to, you know, maybe two or three of them. Anyway, hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. Hopefully you guys found this helpful or uh, entertaining in some way or another. And if you guys are new here and you'd like to see more of this stuff, be sure to subscribe. That way you get notifications whenever I put out anything. Also, be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed it. That way I know that you guys are liking these type of videos. Leave a comment down below on what your thoughts are on SWAT for beginners. I think it's an amazing class for beginners. And I will see all of you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye.